Good afternoon, everybody. This is Roman from Levittown, New York, coming live on this Friday afternoon. Very happy to be here with you guys. We're going to wait just a few seconds for people to join us, and we will begin. So this week we spoke about a couple of things. I think we started on Monday with time. People have no time or people have a lot of time. They don't really know what the time is. Spoke about health, how people think about their health, what they believe the health is and how to deal with this. We spoke about, what did we speak about? We spoke about the self uh, education, education in general, education skills and success, the relationship of those things. And then we spoke yesterday about our relationships with other people who we know, who we don't know, who we do uh, want to be with and who we don't want to be with. So uh, our association and disassociations. So all those topics come to me or actually they, they close to my heart because every day I hear people saying one or the other thing in that problem in those topics that relates to my business and they say you know they don't have time or they have a lot of time they are healthy or they're not healthy but they don't not not healthy yet to to look into my business they have no um relationships or no friends so they cannot succeed in this business or um they that's not business for them they cannot really do it it's something they don't know how to do it and we spoke about it, that there is no such thing as something you know how to do when you are born uh, none of us was born with driver license I, I certainly wasn't born with uh, two uh, diplomas with law degree one in ukraine one in the united states um no i wasn't and uh, not with a black belt around my waist that i can wear right now very proudly so none of these things were given to us and it was always our choice which way to proceed. I think in one of the videos I mentioned my quick story. When I came to America, I was told, based on my prior experience, my level of English language and my background, that the best possible job I can have in America is going to be security guard. There is nothing better. I mean, I can obviously get worse, but this is the top of my wish list. If I get security guard jobs, that will be the best job for me. I was 25. So I could take it. And it could be very well my top wish list job, but it isn't. It wasn't, and it's not going to be for sure. Uh, I have much more uh, ambitions and much more plans for my life. So uh, with that said, we're going to move to today's topic. And I think that today's topic is even more problematic because we're going to talk about money. And... Um, I have to admit I don't I'm not the richest person I'm not the rich person I'm general a normal person but I am changing the way I look at money I'll tell you just one example years ago when I came to America when I got my jobs one job to another job and I finally felt secure meaning I know my pay paycheck is coming I know my expenses so I could go to a store and buy stuff not looking at the price tag but just looking at what I like and I'll add a little this uh, to this. When I was looking at what I like, I did not look at what is inside of it. I was just looking at the picture I saw. So I see cake, I buy cake. I see soda, I buy soda because it's pretty. Two years ago, I realized that by doing so, I'm not only wasting money, but I'm also killing my body. And when I did that, I started looking at the labels in the products that I'm buying, not the price tags, the labels, what is inside the product. And I realized then half of the products, if not more, I used to buy before were actually costing me two, three times more than the price tag. Not because I really paid more, but in the long run, my health went worse, my energy went down, my productivity went down, my weight went up, so I had to change clothing over and over for bigger size. And I don't think that's a happy, happy ending or a happy lifestyle. 
So two years ago, I realized that I have to treat money differently. And uh, there are lots of people who are saying, no, money is not kind of important. Oh, I'm not living for money. Money is not everything. So I like this quote by Zig Ziglar. Pretty much he's saying money isn't the most important thing in life, but it's reasonably close to oxygen on the got to have it scale. And uh, think about it for a second. Unless you live in uh, some desert island, uh, you have to pay for your rent. You have to pay for utilities. You have to have an insurance. You drive in a car, you have to put gas in it. Uh, you cannot just go and collect food from trees. You have to buy it. So if you're saying money is not kind of important, then what is? Can you live a day without spending a penny? Think about it. You think? I think. For you. Yes? Thought about it? So let's move on. So when people tell me they have no money, or they have little money, or whatever the case might be, my first instinct is always say, how come? Don't you eat? Don't you have cable TV? Don't you have cell phone? Do you drive car? Or you walk into work? Do you buy clothing? Do you have uh, some desserts on your table? And obviously, I'm not saying that there's everybody in the world that has money. There are people who legitimately don't have any money. And especially in today's situation, many people are struggling to make their ends meet because of the jobs that are cut or temporary closed down or whatever the case may be. I understand that, but I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about general population that I speak with everyday life. People who have jobs, who are still employed, who are making money, who are doing whatever something they're doing in their life. And uh, very interesting example. I spoke with people, don't want to mention, and they said, oh no, we have absolutely no money. And uh, I said, fine, uh, I'll give you some ideas, but whenever you're ready, let me know when you have, or you come to some money, you really don't need much money to, to take care of yourself because I'm not selling uh, them or I'm not trying to get them into our business. They don't have to invest money to be in our business, but I'm trying to help them to get better because all of them have health issues. And I'm trying to kind of say, listen, if you have this little money, we can start on your health program to get you in better shape. And I'm finding out they don't have money for themselves, but they got a dog. So they have to pay for the dog, they have to pay for the food, they have to pay for the vet, they have to pay for the leash, whatever the case might be. Wait a second, you have no money for yourself, but you're spending money on the pet. Don't you see a little disconnect there? We have to think, if we want to, obviously not, we don't have to, but people who are saying they're serious about themselves, they're serious about their life, they have to take <clears throat> into account what are the priorities. Is the priority health? Is the priority dog? Is the priority car? Is the priority home? There are different things. Uh, you probably know I'm doing, uh, I'm an attorney doing uh, foreclosure work, so I see a lot of people who are in financial hardships, and some of them are in legitimate financial hardship, but some of them not. I've seen people who came to me saying we're paying $600 for a car lease. $600, and guys, for those who are not in America, $600 for a lease, it's like a, it's a decent Mercedes or a very fancy SUV car. So, $600 lease for a Ford, not the Jeep, not the SUV, just the sedan car. And when I ask why, they say, no, we have very bad credit history. And then I would say, anything else? And they say, no, we have another car, another $400. And I say, how many people drive in this car? One person. The second person drives on and off. And that kind of blows my mind. It's $1,000 on two cars that one person drives, and both of them are retired. Just, just an idea. So uh, what I'm trying to make point is, People are spending money without thinking about the value of money. 
So I looked at a couple of things uh, before we met today, and uh, I looked at the very thing that I believe has to be not banned completely significantly limited because it doesn't do any good except kills us soft drinks soft sweet and uh, um, drinks so there is a statistics and there are, i found two different sources so i just put it number one number two in a household that receives snap benefits meaning food stamps money to buy food and the snap is uh, considered to be to buy nutritious food that's that's what the idea was of the program number one or number two depending on which source i take food that and food i put a parenthesis purchased on snap is soft drinks so the product that make you fat sick um fragile because they take all the um alkaline uh, base uh, minerals from your body to neutralize the acid that we have in a soft drinks you paying money to kill your body and this is number one or number two product for people who have snap so people who consider to be the poorest people in the country but spending the most money to kill themselves the next expense probably would be the medical insurance for those same people because they're getting sicker and sicker and sicker drinking what they drink now i looked at the other thing we're all talking about health my business is health business so i'm trying to help people to be healthy live longer and happier so a lot of people saying oh i have to exercise i need to be in a gym every single day i will be strong i will be lean and, and so on and so forth here's statistics again i found it today about 60 percent of members uh, gym membership never used or used once and never used again i'll give you an example i went uh to a sports club and they had the sale like very cheap and a friend of mine said let's sign up and the idea was i will sign up with him and i will be going together i will be helping him uh to be consistent because i'm pretty good for the discipline but he has a little bit more expertise in uh, weight training so he would give me some weight training so it was kind of uh an exchange of favors i signed up my friend did not uh i went there once for free class because they have that kind of promotion i took the free class i never went back four months later i canceled the membership and this is me who kind of counting money but my friend never done step number one he did not even sign up so that's thing now 80 percent of gym memberships go to gym once a week now i'm doing martial arts for over 20 years i'm in sports since i was eight and i know for sure if you train once a week you're not progressing you're not even staying level you're going down once a week even two hours will not do anything to your body it will hurt you but it will not do anything especially if you don't even know what you're doing it's just going to hurt you so going to gym once a week is waste of money as much as not going to gym at all and not buying it probably will be better better option so now the other few things uh lunch a lot of people i see come to a job to work and order lunch no problem about it obviously everybody likes to eat uh tasty food uh nicely looking here's the problem when i ask people if you how you do in financial they say oh i am in bad situation and my next question would be if you're in a bad situation why are you spending five not really five anymore like ten dollars per lunch which you can uh, probably stretch for a couple days if you bring your homemade lunch and people saying oh just just uh better for me i like more food i like different foods and i said so cook different foods and people say no 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 no, it's too complicated so once again they're saying i have no money but at the same time they're spending a lot of money way more than they should or they could afford for the food coffee that kills me actually i um when i came to america i was not quite comprehending it i'm not heavy coffee drinker i'm pretty much drinking coffee very little 
but for me they when i was going to work every morning seeing line on the street people trying to get a coffee cup from the uh, cart or um, any kind of uh, coffee uh, coffee chain store i was like don't you have the teapot at home can you make coffee at home and people don't that coffee costs dollar two three dollars depending again how fancy you want to go coffee at home costs you almost nothing if you stretch again the price of the i don't know bag of coffee or whatever over the month and or two months you're going to drink it i'm not kind of getting it people saying they have no money but they are just throwing money in garbage and again coffee is a very good uh drink but it's not extremely healthy drink so again something that in my opinion if you're drinking coffee first you want to make sure it's a good coffee and you either buy it very expensive but then again you have to have money or you do it yourself so you know what you're drinking same goes with food if you order it you may know what it's made of but i doubt it if you make it yourself chances you know what is inside like 50 percent because you still don't know what happened with that food while it was in stores so um I want to bring this back to a statement I made that many people believe that uh, if you think about money a lot, you are a bad person and uh, thinking or focusing on money is a bad thing. So I don't remember who's saying it is. I believe I got it from Jim Rohn, but it says money do not, uh, do not person good or bad, meaning they're not making person good or bad. They simply magnify who the person is. So basically, if you are a good person and you come into money, you will do more good. If you're a bad person and you come into the money, you will be even worse. And this is very true. So even if people who are poor and then they become rich and changing, it's not that they were good and then they became bad. They were bad, but they were hiding and keeping their real self inside of them. So uh, to bring this home, money is not the bad thing <laughs> especially here money is almost valuable as as oxygen so what you do with your money is a big question mark what you want to do with your money is a big question mark uh, how to approach money is calculate what you spend your money on and i like this advice that was given uh, to uh, one of my mentors darren hardy and uh, when, when he was kind of figuring out what happens with money, he was told, take a little notebook, carry it in your back pocket or in, in, in your purse if you're lady, and write down every single penny you spend. When you do that for a couple of weeks, you will, one, think about each expense because you every time has to have to pull that notepad. But number two, you will see how much money you're wasting. Uh, the similar uh, suggestion goes with time. People say, no, I don't have time. Take the notepad, write every single second you spend on your day. You will see how much time is wasted. So, guys, I'm here. I'm trying to be helpful. And I'm trying to bring some value to, uh, to your day, to your life. In all respects. I'm doing uh, AM exercises here to get you into routine of exercising daily. I'm coming here in the afternoons and delivering you some information about either how to be healthier or how to be smarter or how to be more successful. It's not my personal ideas. I'm learning from other people. And as you see, I'm using a lot of quotes. I don't want to say this is me. I'm so smart. I'm a regular person, but I'm open and I'm willing to learn. I always uh, able to find time for things that I value more than something else so education for me is one of the things that i have to find time for family is another one my health absolutely the thing that i have to find time for it now uh many people will say oh but i can save money but then i spend have to spend more time and that's where your judgment comes into the play there is no one solution for everybody so we all have to decide I'll give you another example about my life. Uh, when we bought this house, I loved to do the, the lawn. Mowing the lawn was a very good exercise for me. I did it every other week and it took me like four or five hours. Four or five hours 
which was fun because it's outside, it's sun, it's air, it's green. Here's the problem. Mowing the lawn by crew that comes takes about 20 minutes. And I paid them 30 bucks. So um, for me, it's worth to save my four hours of mowing lawn, 30 bucks. And that four hours now I can spend with my family, I can spend with my partners, I can spend with my health, or I can just spend time reading the book. So the investment of money versus investment of time, it's always a judgment call that you have to make. But I call your attention to the two facts. One, money are not bad, they are necessity in our today's life. And money do not make you worse person. They just underline who you really are. With that said, think about your money, think what you do with them, think what's most important in your life and kind of put a little price tag to that. Your family, your health, your house, fancy car, or maybe fancy car first. So think about it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that was useful. Uh, please share it if it was. If you want to comment, absolutely, I will be happy to hear hear your comments and see them. And I will be back here next Monday at 5.15 with more information on health and wellness. Or if you are up for a workout on Saturday, I will be here tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. and we can work out together. Thank you so much for watching. Again, have a wonderful day. Be well. Stay safe.